Hey man, I have some problems right now. I really need some help. Do you think you can give me a couple minutes? Uh, no, I don't have any time. Pseudo. What? Pseudo, can you help me right now? Uh, how can I say no? <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know, I just started my new job. And one of the first things that you have to do when you start a new job is... Set up your new local environment. Setting up your local environment basically means getting all your programs installed, getting all the tools in there, get, making sure you have everything that you need to get down to business with that code base. If you don't know why I left my last job, there's a link in the description that covers everything that you need to know as to why I made that decision to leave Google and why I'm on this new path working at this other company. So as I'm setting up my new environment and getting everything set up, I start seeing that a lot of the onboarding documentation is not working. A lot of the steps that I'm taking, it's not reflecting anything. I'm kind of confused about this. So I reach out to my boss in Slack. Help, 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 please help. No, 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 no. That's a problem. Apple's new M1 chip, also known as the Apple Silicon, is running on a different architecture, known as ARM64. Well, that's the problem. No one on my team is using an M1, so they don't understand where things need to be installed. I gotta figure this out. None of the documentation that we currently have matches what we need. This is gonna be an issue. Not gonna lie, I have no clue where to get started, if I'm gonna be honest, but we're just gonna start digging around and start figuring out. The tools that I know I need to install, it's gonna be Homebrew. I know I'm gonna be installing a Node version manager to roll back versions of Node. I know I need to be able to sync that together. I need to make sure that I clone all the repos that I need. I wanna make sure that I have my VS Code set up and my Goland set up so that way I can work in the JavaScript portion or the Golang portion to make sure that I, I can cover both sides. I'm gonna go ahead and link all the resources that I utilize. So if you're trying to figure out how to set up your M1 and you stumble across this, you'll find all the same things that I utilize. I can't necessarily share all the documentation that I'm writing as I'm doing this. Obviously that's company property, but you're gonna get a fair idea of all the links and all the information that you're gonna to need to be using. Being completely honest, one of the biggest headaches that I'm going through right now is documenting every single step. Like when I take a step, whether if it works or not, I'm documenting it so I don't forget it. And then if it doesn't work, I have to remove it and try and figure out what I need to do next. So one issue that I ran into, which was a big headache to kind of figure out was when I was running the program and I was making the calls, I was getting a 401 error, which is an unauthorized error. And I found this really interesting because I was using my GitLab access token. I was using it in the registry where you put it in your .npmrc file but it was still coming up unauthorized. And this was really, really, really racking my brain. We couldn't figure it out. I worked with my team and pair program for a little bit and showed them what I'm going through. When I try to build an application, this is the error that I'm getting. It's not making any sense to me because I'm using the GitLab access token. I have maintained access over the repo. So I know for a fact that um, I sh this shouldn't be an issue. I wish I knew why this was happening. Let me ask my coworker here. Hey, Peanut, any idea why this is happening to me right now? Do you have a clue? Good talk. But for some reason, I'm still running into this. So someone was actually kind enough to create a GitLab access token on their profile. And I used that and it worked. But why? Then I realized I didn't know I had to do this, but apparently I did. I didn't put an expiration date on the token. And because of that, for whatever reason, it just wasn't reading it. I didn't know I needed to do that, but you live and you learn and I created a GitLab access token. It now has an expiration date. So now I can actually build the application. I can see in real time on localhost what I'm doing and it allows me to work in my local environment. I can push that to test obviously, but I can at least now see what I'm working on. No more 401 errors. So I can also tell you at this point that the documentation is looking fantastic. Um, I shared it with a couple teammates, trying to get their opinions on it. They really, really love it. I will say one thing that I did pick up in, in my time at Google was how to make really great documentation. I thought I was pretty decent at that before, but I was way off base. And the documentation flows a lot better now. And it looks significantly better. And I think this is coming across. So that way, the next person that comes after me, hopefully this won't take them several days but it'll just take them several hours if they follow these steps. I think that's a big deal because that insight, especially er, like your first couple of days, you're already nervous, you're already freaking out. So having that good documentation to take you from A to B, I think that's that's really important for new developers, especially junior developers. We have a new junior on the team, um, which is awesome. I love working with you know junior devs and trying to get them to rise up the rank. So really, really excited about that one. But this week being a short week, Friday was a holiday. Monday's also a holiday. We're, we're observing Christmas on that day. So I get to have Monday off, so it's a short week, but be diving into a lot of tickets uh, next week that I can kind of, I can't share company code and all this stuff. I'm not gonna get in trouble like that, but at least allow you to see the problem solving aspect and kind of talk through what I'm doing and give you a better idea of 
what the day in the life of an actual developer is and the problems that they face and the way that they can kind of approach these problems. One thing that I'm also doing is I'm trying to fall back in love with reading again. And I feel like maybe because I read too much at work that I, I don't try to do it casually anymore. So every single day I'm trying to spend a little bit of time, maybe even read like 10, 15 pages to just try and get back into it. So I'm trying to read some fun stuff. This is from the Witcher series, but I'm really trying to get back into it, you know? If you want to know why self-taught developers end up failing and not thriving in this industry, link right there. All the resources that I used to set up the M1, link in the description. Last video, link in the description about why I left my last role. If there's something that you want to see, let me know in the comments on what I can kind of approach. I'm not trying to add too much technical stuff to this, but really to walk you through what I'm going through.